this is Dr. Andrew Jones. In this edition of NRA Secrets, I'm going to be discussing what vaccines your kitten's going to need. Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, welcome. In today's video, we're featuring a wonderful new little kitten. Her name is Abby. So we're filming here in the kitchen because this is where little Abby here is liking to hang out with her newly adopted Uncle Mangus who's in the background. He's been in some of the videos. So one of the big questions I'm often asked is, you know, what vaccines should I be getting for my kitten? Um, you may have heard about concerns about over vaccinations, about you know concerns around certain things that can happen if your cat is given too many vaccines, you know such as feline fibrosarcomas, um, thoughts around autoimmune disease. Um, there's now links around kidney disease and vaccines. Never mind you know things like allergic skin disease, inflammatory bowel disease. So what are the vaccines that your kitten is going to need? What age should you be starting at? Well, in my opinion, I think the earliest you need to be giving your kitten a vaccine is preferably eight weeks. Um, in some cases, it could be a little bit later, even 12 weeks is the first vaccine. And I think they only need a series of two, two vaccines. If you're going to do it at 12 weeks, follow up with a booster at 16 weeks or so four weeks later. And I think in the majority of the cases, that's all you're going to need. You funny little kitten. <laughs> there are core vaccines, those are the ones that are considered the most common viruses your cat can potentially get. The vaccines that seem to be more effective. And those are the ones that I'm advising that you consider giving your kitten. If I were to have a kitten, if little Abby here were my kitten, this is what I'd be giving her. So she's now almost 12 weeks, which is a great time to give her her first vaccine. And the core vaccine is FVRCP, so that's feline viral rhinotracheitis, one of the respiratory viruses. Feline calici virus, another res common respiratory virus, or the two viruses are the most common cause of the cat flu. And then the third core part of, the, uh, part of those vaccines is called feline panleukopenia, or feline distemper virus. A much more serious infectious disease that we still see today that is fully preventable by vaccine. So those are considered the core vaccine, the most common diseases potentially that your kitten can get that are preventable by vaccine that are also effective. What I would do now is be giving her that booster now. She's at the age of 12 weeks and then I'll be following that up with that same vaccine being boosted again at 16 weeks. Another vaccine that by many veterinarians is considered a core vaccine is the rabies vaccine. That one's slightly different. So if you live in an area where rabies, for instance, is endemic, you know, it's in the wild animal population, you know, such as the skunk population, and you're gonna have an outdoor cat, then potentially they're at risk of getting rabies. So then you wanna be consider having that rabies vaccine. In some areas, it's mandated by state law that your cat is vaccinated for rabies. You've got an outdoor cat, well then they're gonna need to be vaccinated for rabies. But if you're in an area such as where I live, where rabies is not considered endemic, we don't see animals with rabies in our area, we haven't seen it for you know, many, many, many years, it's not, rabies is not a real risk for our animals. Um, so even though I have an outdoor cat, I will not be vaccinating him for rabies. A couple additional points around vaccines for our kittens. First of all, when your veterinarian does do the vaccine, you want to first make sure they're not doing up in here between the shoulder blades. We want them to do preferably at the tail base here or on the right and left lateral sides of the legs. So we're looking at the rear legs. Um, the main reason we're trying to avoid in between the shoulder blades is there's a condition, a disease called fibrosarcoma. It's a type of cancer that has been linked to vaccines, especially vaccines given up in here between the shoulder blades. And if that's the case, it's, it's really difficult, in many cases impossible, to remove that cancer if it happens. There are a whole host of other non-core vaccines, one such as feline leukemia virus, I don't advise you give that. One such as FIV virus vaccine, I don't advise you give that. 
um, one such as FIP vaccine and other serious infectious disease. If the vaccine isn't proving to be very effective or helpful, I don't advise you give that. Some of the other ones I would point you towards against. There's vaccines now for Giardia, vaccines for Chlamydia as well too. Little Abby here is going to be an outdoor kitten. She's gonna be exposed to other cats that have infectious disease. Makes sense to have her vaccinated with the FERCP, the two, the Corvat vaccine. Now at 12 weeks, a booster at 16 weeks. And after that, I think she's gonna have more than adequate immunity, likely for the rest of her life. So I think the, one of the big things I wanna sort of get across to you guys is the point of vaccines was to prevent infectious disease in the first place. So, you know, if you've got a kitten, such as little Abby here, who's gonna be a strictly an indoor cat, and if I was to have a 100% strictly indoor cat, I would get them no vaccines. Your kitten and your cat will not get any of those diseases you know, unless you bring another cat into your house. So I think, in, so in many cases, I really think we're giving far too, ma too many vaccines, too many cats, too many kittens, and far too often. There, there's no real justification now to be doing things, all those other associated vaccines that I've discussed, about doing these yearly boosters, yearly vaccines, in spite of what many, you know, many veterinarians may be telling you guys. There's no real, there's no real medical basis to it. You can go ahead and do some of your own research now. These big organizations such as the AAFP, American Association of Feline Practitioners, for instance, I mean, they're advising those core vaccines. And that's it. Thanks, little Abby, for being in today's video. She's been pretty tolerant. Just kind of had to move the camera around to be where she wants to be. She's super, super cute. So first of all, you really have to give her a thumbs up by clicking the like button on the video. She's found a new spot to hang out.